And tonight's film continues after the news next. Toyota Seven Seat Verso sponsors ITV Family Movies. Well, that race continues down under. In 15 minutes, we'll return to Mission Impossible 2 after the latest ITV News Now with James Mates. Accused of behaving like a lone shark, the minister behind the punitive interest rates that could hit Britain's poorest. James Parnell says he wants to make the government's social fund available to more people. The Tories say he'd penalise hard-up families. Also tonight, shop around the clock, the big extension in opening hours as festive sales slump. And a Lapland Christmas is cancelled. Tears and disappointment for dozens of children. Good evening. The government's been condemned for considering a plan to charge credit card style interest rates to some of the poorest people in society. The social fund gives families interest-free loans to help them with unforeseen expenses and crises. But tonight it's emerged that Work and Pension Secretary James Purnell is considering charging them an annual rate of interest of almost 27%. Well, let's go live now to our political correspondent, Alex Forrest at Westminster. Alex, whatever one may think about this idea, the timing is extraordinary given the current climate, isn't it? Yeah, it's completely extraordinary. And even the Labour chairman of the Commons Committee that oversees James Pennell's department has described this to me as outrageous and immoral. And that is because the social fund is set up to offer emergency interest-free loans to those people who need it most, so the unemployed and those on benefits. But under James Pennell's plan, that fund would be taken over by credit loan companies uh, who would uh, charge interest rate. We're talking, uh, according to the Mail on Sunday, of interest rates of up to 24% a year, an APR of almost 27%. And even the Tories are appalled. There are thousands of people losing their jobs every week in this country at the moment. We have traditionally provided those people with interest-free emergency loans to help tide them over. The idea we get rid of those now turn them into 26% store card level loans for people who have just been through all the trauma of losing their jobs is extraordinary. Frankly, this makes Gordon Brown look like a loan shark. Well, the Department for Work and Pensions has tonight said this is just a proposal and that perhaps rather ironically they're doing this uh, to try to stop people from going to illegal loan sharks. But really this does seem to come at the most extraordinary time. We're talking about a Labour government, we're talking about a recession. And to me, it sounds a little bit like that Tempe tax fiasco. I honestly do not think that these plans will see the light of day. OK, Alex, thank you very much. America is to send up to 30,000 extra troops to Afghanistan by next summer. It'll double the number of US troops in the country to around 60,000. This latest deployment is seen as part of President-elect Barack Obama's pledge to move the focus from Iraq to Afghanistan. The first hard evidence of how badly the recession has affected Christmas sales was revealed tonight. Retail analysts experience say the number of shoppers last week was down 9% compared to last year. Little surprise then that some stores are planning to stay open all hours to boost sales before Christmas. Salma Siraj reports. <laughs> of goodwill and price cuts to all. This year, tinsel and sparkly lights are not enough to create the festive spirit shops need. They've had to start Boxing Day sales before Christmas. The recession is challenging, and the likelihood is, is that it will remain challenging for 2009, and I would hope that we will certainly see a recovery in the early part of 2010. New figures indicate that high street and shopping centre sales from last week were down 9% year on year. Some stores are taking drastic short-term measures and will extend Sunday hours tomorrow. Plus, more than 730 supermarkets will be trading 24 hours a day from midnight tomorrow until Christmas Eve. Another 500 stores, including M&S, will open until midnight on the 22nd and 23rd. Retailers are desperate. These very relaxed shoppers hear that message loud and clear. They know they have all the time in the world to take advantage of these sales but not everyone is happy about 24-hour shopping. 
Some unions and religious groups have been arguing that Christmas is a time for families to be together, not for 24-hour shopping. Our members work extremely hard in the build-up to Christmas, and what this now does is puts them under pressure to work and consequently cuts down the amount of time that they've got to spend with the families over the festive period. But while there is genuine concern here for the well-being of shops, especially after the demise of Woolworths, they are more worried about the pounds in their pocket at the moment. And that is never good news for retailers. Salma Siraj, ITV News at Brent Cross. There is growing expectation that the government will have to produce a rescue package for Britain's struggling car industry. One senior union leader today warned that tens of thousands of jobs are at risk and a Labour peer says he's confident that, confident that a package of loans will be arranged fairly soon. The severely injured round-the-world sailor Jan Elias is being ferried to Australia after being rescued by a frigate in the Southern Ocean. The British yachtswoman Sam Davis, who turned back to help him, is now back in the round-the-world race and is tonight trying to regain lost time. Football and Sam Allardyce is off to a winning start as the manager of Blackburn Rovers. His new team beat Stoke City 3-0, their first win since the end of September. And Aston Villa have moved ahead of Manchester United into third place in the Premier League. A late Lucas Neal own goal gave them a 1-0 victory at West Ham. And David Beckham has officially started his new temporary career at Italian football with AC Milan. Beckham, who's on loan from LA Galaxy, appeared at a news conference today. I didn't take this opportunity as, uh, if I didn't think that I could help the team and, and help the club. It's what, it's what I came here to do. You know, it's not, about, um, it's not about anything else apart from the football. And finally, scores of excited children were left upset today after a special flight to see Father Christmas and his reindeer was cancelled. The reason... According to the airline, too much snow in Lapland. Jackie Kepler has more. Angry parents, tearful children. Organisers had promised a magical Christmas day trip to remember, and it certainly was for all the wrong reasons. Nearly 170 excited passengers were ready to board the flight from Manchester to Lapland when they were told it was cancelled due to poor weather at their destination. Families like the Davies were devastated. The children were crying, grandparents were crying, mums and dads were crying. I hope that the people who tried to plan that will try and do better for other people because we don't want this happening again, do we? These are the Lapland scenes the children had been so excited about. Airline Blue Line said nobody got to see Santa because conditions in Finland did not meet safety standards. But an airport spokesman told ITV News that four planes did land safely there during the day. Tour operator Transun has promised full refunds, but for these tearful children, meeting Father Christmas will remain a dream. Jackie Cabler, ITV News. That's it for tonight. Good night. So despite the filled with clouds, feel his wheels and do you proud? Hello again. After a very mild start to the weekend, we continue with those incredibly mild temperatures for many as we move through the night. Some of those temperatures staying up into double figures, around 10 Celsius, 50 Fahrenheit. That's even above the daytime highs that we're meant to see for this time of year. That just gives you an idea of how mild it really is. We're also seeing heavy rain over western Scotland. Some of that is turning to snow across the higher ground and cloudy elsewhere with a little bit of patchy drizzle which continues as we move into tomorrow. Although I think the heaviest of the rain is going to move away from the northern parts of Scotland and you should see the best chance of any brightness, although it is going to be another very windy day up towards the north and west, but elsewhere I think fairly cloudy and drab. But once again you can see it is going to continue very mild indeed. Good night, see you tomorrow. Demons start Saturday, 3rd of January. <laughs> Central weather with the BMIBaby.com credit card. Hello there. Well, feeling exceptionally mild at the moment, but things will turn much colder over the next few days and more settled. And we could have some problems with fog and frost by the time we get through to Christmas Day. 
Well, Saturday night, lots of cloud around, but some good breaks in that and staying mild, the wind picking up later on in the night. Sunday morning dawns, and it's going to be mostly cloudy, particularly in the west. Best of any breaks out towards the east and for Sunday afternoon. Odd spitty spots of drizzle, particularly in the northwest, but generally some breaks appearing pretty much the same as Saturday, really. But look at those temperatures. 12 is 54 Fahrenheit. Where they would normally be at this time of year is around about 7, which is 45. So a marked difference there. And then if we take a look at those winds, still quite fresh across the region, as you can see. After that, we remain in this milder sector for Monday. Temperatures, though, on their way down. And by Tuesday, we're beginning to see or rather feel a bit of a change. I think we'll get away with a frost-free morning on Tuesday. Lots of cloud around the wind easing back for Monday and Tuesday. But then on Wednesday, exceptionally cold in the morning. High pressure right slap bang over us. And that's going to... Stay with us for quite a while, so minus 2, minus 3 in the morning, only up to 5, which is 41 by the afternoon, and we're starting off with those problems of mist and frost and fog. That's it for now. Bye-bye. Central Weather with the BMIBaby.com credit card. Daniel! Joseph! No! <laughs> Bye! 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 Hut, hut, hut. If you want a break from routine, come to Pizza Hut and have pasta. Pasta, pasta. Our new range of Tuscany pastas are delicious when you fancy a change. Mm. Can, Can I, I try, try yours? yours? <laughs> Pizza Hut. Get together. You have to say yes to everything. You ever try that? Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes, there. Hi, Kyle. Kelly, what can I do for you? I don't know if I'm going to be able to say yes to this one. Oh, God! Lockets help clear your nose and soothe your throat. Got a fiver? Then you got a party. Iceland's brilliant party platters are just five pounds each for up to seventy-five pieces. Butterfly king prawns, very sophisticated. Sixty pieces for five pounds. A delicious dessert platter, mini donuts, pastry slices, creamy sponge rolls, and bitter rolls. Sixty pieces for five pounds. Indian platter, badges, pakora, and samosas. Seventy-five pieces, five pounds. Five pound party platters. That's why Mum goes to Iceland. Conquered the skies, conquered Mount Everest, conquered the neck. Philips Architect, designed to follow the contours of your face with a pivoting and rotating head. So it helps you easily get a close shave, even on the neck. Magnus Draft Cider. It's the perfect icebreaker. Making sure the conversation flows. In the time it takes to create a cool, crisp pint. No ice. Just pure premium taste. Magnus Draft Cider. Time dedicated to you. This is how you enter the App Store. And this is how you browse thousands of new apps. And this is how you download one right to your phone. And this is when you realize this is going to change everything. Boss, fragrances for men. friends and family down under this Christmas, GMTV has a special gift for you. We're inviting your loved ones from Oz to send their festive messages back home. 
On Tuesday, we'll be live from Sydney and on Christmas Eve, live from Perth. For information on times and locations, log on to gm.tv. Now Tom Cruise is back as the battle to catch a killer virus continues in our film Mission Impossible 2, which contains scenes of violence. Toyota 7-seat Verso sponsors ITV Family Movies. 